Hey guys, as always, thanks for stopping by. Got some great news for you. I am pumped, if you can't tell, to get you some really solid news and some good information here and good news coming out of the state of Virginia. Going to get you updated now on the Virginia Sanctuary County and Sanctuary City situation. Of course, it's on the Second Amendment and it really is exciting to see. But spoiler alert, it's good news. Folks are lining up in lockstep one with another. Is it perfect? Well, of course not. There's still some issues out there, a lot of issues going on, but I'm following it really closely, going to get you updated right now. Now, I want to say really clearly, there's not one place we can go to for information. Today is Thursday, 12-12. I'm following it really carefully. But the situation is really fluid. But as of today, I have fully done my homework. It's the only thing I've worked on this afternoon. I feel really confident in what I have found to present to you. But again, there's not one place for folks to go to. And so all of the information doesn't line up really perfectly. Now, there's a lot of folks out there holding up their phones at different rallies and events. There's folks that are going to these open microphones and open forums and recording it and putting it on social media. But even the numbers that we're getting aren't lining up really perfectly. But as of today, 12, 12, Thursday, the best number that I have to present to you is 84 out of 95 counties have declared themselves Second Amendment sanctuaries. How cool is that? I mean, I really am genuinely and deeply pumped on what's going on. Is it perfect? Well, of course not. Do we have a huge fight ahead of us? Absolutely. Of course we do. But it is good to see what's going on there. I'm watching this closely, and I know a lot of y'all are, and I think it's important because how one state goes, other states can follow, and it's important for us to see and to send this message out that we are the majority now, it's been really tough even for me over the last couple weeks talking about this stuff because down in the comment section, as always, it's been a little bit wild down there. But even within the 2A community, I've had brothers who have come at me and say, hey, Johnny, you know what? You're a, you're a communist. I was called a communist last night. It's a little bit laughable. I was called the enemy today because I won't come out hard against the NRA. And my first thought was, have you seen my Instagram feed? Yeah, I'll blister the NRA every chance I get. I'm a member, but I still blister them. My point is this, is that even though these counties are lining up and a lot of them are voting these ordinances, they're voting them full on, like full unanimous. And it's really cool to see Again, it's not one movement. There's a lot of different factions and feelings and everybody has their opinions. And on some level, that's democracy and it's pretty cool to see. So overall, looking at it from the top down, like overall, it really is cool to see. And I really am excited. Nothing like this has ever taken place in my lifetime. And so it's super, super to see. I'm pumped if you can't tell. Now, I got a couple questions, a few things I wanna walk you through. One person said something online that really made me stop today and started thinking about this. And they said, hey, just because a county passes an ordinance to say, hey, they're a sanctuary city for the sanct a sanctuary county for the Second Amendment, what does that really mean? Because if Governor Blackface does get this legislation pushed through, those folks in maybe one particular county, if that does go through, they're not going to be able to go to their local gun store and pick up an AR-15. So their freedoms are still going to be taken away because on the national level, the distributors and the manufacturers are not going to be able to get those firearms to the local gun stores. And so it's going to affect them, even if that county holds their fist up and says, you know, we won't stand for this. Well, you're going to have to, because on the national level, there's still going to be some, some problems because of what's passed in the state. So that's a challenge, even, be, even though, and I know some people are really excited, and I'm excited, even though these ordinances are being passed, or resolutions, a lot of the counties are calling them, they're being passed, the NFA still stands. The National Firearms Act of 1934 still stands. The Gun Control Act of 1968 still stands. The ATF still has a presence in all 95 counties. So the work is still to be done. However, it certainly does send a message. I called him Governor Blackface here just a moment ago, and people got mad below yesterday, me calling him that. I don't care. People said, well, what does the color of his skin have to do with it? Try and keep up, y'all. Try and keep up. But Governor Blackface has come out just recently. This was covered in several places. I read it in the Free Beacon and in the Daily Wire today. 
that Governor Blackface has backed off from his initial plan, and now, oh, I love this, oh, I love these words. He says he's going to allow, under his new proposals, allow Virginians to keep their AR-15s, and that is absolutely laughable that the government would allow us to keep our personal property. Thanks, Governor Blackface. Really appreciate that. So the, my point is this, twofold. One, to make fun of him, but second, to say they are paying attention to what's going on, and that's important. Had somebody else stop me today and say, Johnny, you're taking a little bit too far. You need to tone it down just a little bit. I'll tone it down when they do. When I don't feel like a criminal by purchasing or owning an AR-15, it's my right. It's an absolute constitutional right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. And I had somebody from the 2A community say, Johnny, you need, to, you need to back it down just a little bit. Well, how about they back it down just a little bit? Not that individual, but the left and those coming against our freedoms. It's a challenge. It's thought-provoking. I hope, hope for you it's thought-provoking. It certainly is for me. I'm being mindful. A couple other things I want to go through. What can you do to get involved? A lot of folks have asked me, and I'm going to ask you all what I'm about to say. I'm presenting this to you as a question. I was pointed the other day towards the Virginia Citizens Defense League, the VCDL, the Virginia Citizens Defense League. I've joined it. I paid my membership dues today. So I'm now a member of the VCDL. And I was told that was a great organization. Everything that I read, people gave it a thumbs up. It's grassroots. It's volunteer-based. Every check mark that I needed to see from that organization, I saw it. So right now, I feel good. But I'm asking y'all, those of y'all with good information and firsthand information and firsthand experience, what do you think about the VCDL? What do you think? Now, long term, here's my question. What does this overall mean for us in the 2A community? What's going on in this tidal wave of good information that's going on in Virginia? What does it really mean? Where do we go from here? Overall, fantastic news. I'm so pleased to tell y'all and get you updated on what's going on in Virginia. When I know more, you'll know more. I'll keep you updated. As always, thanks for stopping by. I'm Johnny, and I'm happy. <laughs>